The relationship between Sasuke and Sakura has always been bumpy. Sakura herself was what to some might seem obsessed, and to a point, that's true. In her younger years, every thought was Sasuke. Every answer was Sasuke. You could ask her what day it was, or what time on the clock it was, and her answer would invariably be Sasuke. But as she grew older, her obsession slowly reshaped itself into dedication. A girl who could think logically and focus on other things, all while remaining dedicated to her love. That's not to say she didn't lose faith in him. I mean, she did try to kill him during the Five Kage Summit, but still, she was dedicated. She never stopped loving him, and if she had killed him, she would still love him. That's how Sakura was. Throughout his life, Sasuke never showed much affection towards her, only showing it twice, really, that being from the last movie through the Boruto series. Still, every other time he tried to kill her. But there was one time in the original series, despite how annoying he said she was, that he showed her true affection. And that was when he was leaving the village. He had made up his mind and she refused to allow it, threatening to scream. He would, of course, give her ye ol karate chop to the back of the neck and leave her on a park bench. But before leaving, he expressed his affections to her. Sakura, thank you for everything. <laughs> Showing that, despite all the walls he put up, he did admire and care for her. And for a time, he considered giving up his dreams of killing Itachi just for her and Naruto. But sadly, these feelings failed to stop him. He couldn't have it both ways. He could only choose the one or the other. But what if he could have both? What if instead of trying to stop him, Sakura decided to go with him? Welcome to the Yamagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Yamagi. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Sasuke was walking in the night. His mind was made up, he would leave the village. It wasn't like he wanted to, he had no choice. His growth and potential was suddenly being dwarfed under Naruto's. Sasuke had once looked down on Naruto and eventually came to respect him as a peer, but suddenly he wasn't a peer anymore. He surpassed him. He was capable of doing things Sasuke couldn't do. His Rasengan was a testament to his power, how he leveled that water tower when Sasuke had only pinned out at it. It was infuriating, not only because it hurt his pride for a nobody out of nowhere to suddenly just up and run laps around him, but that it meant that he was still nowhere near Itachi's level. Naruto could never beat Itachi, and because of that, Sasuke knew that he would never be able to either. Not at the rate he was going anyway. But what more could he do? He had one of Konoha's most elite shinobi as a teacher, and even then Sasuke wasn't growing as fast as he had hoped. Was this it? Had he plateaued? Had he squeezed every ounce of potential he had out of himself? Sasuke had to face the facts. He wasn't a prodigy like everyone believed, merely an early bloomer of average strength. He sincerely believed that as it stood, he could never defeat Itachi. And slowly but surely, his dreams, the one thing that kept him going through the hardest moments of his life, were slowly slipping away. And it was painful. It hurt worse than the broken wrist he had sustained, the mental anguish he had endured just days earlier. Those were superficial wounds compared to the thought of failing, of never achieving his dream. No, he refused. If he could not grow stronger in Konoha, he would leave it behind. He would find another way to build himself up. If he could not squeeze any more potential out of himself, then he could change himself to cultivate more potential. And the only person he could think of that would be able to help was Orochimaru. Sasuke had thought it impossible, but Orochimaru had managed to increase his strength near tenfold just by adding to him the curse mark. And considering how much stronger the Sound 4 had been than himself, he wondered if Orochimaru could force this strength out of himself. Make him as strong as that. Make him capable of leveling villages all on his own. It was not like such a feat was impossible, and he needed to be capable of doing it. Itachi had single-handedly destroyed all of the Uchiha without a single issue. The Uchiha were one of the most elite members of Konoha's military force and had been the ones in charge of keeping Konoha safe from harm and attack. Itachi leveling them all by himself was tantamount to him leveling Konoha by itself. The civilians and other Chunin would never hope to match him. Sasuke sincerely believed, in some twisted idolatry towards his most hated enemy, that there was no shinobi in all of Konoha that could beat him. Even Hiruzen, when he was still living, had no chance against Itachi, and it was Hiruzen himself who had been titled a god of the shinobi. 
The village could not defeat Itachi, and they could not raise up anyone capable enough to. The village was not profitable for Sasuke's goals. It was useless and therefore should be discarded. As he thought of that though, something within Sasuke cramped up. An emotional gut punch. It was as if his subconscious had posed him a question. What about your friends? Sasuke shook his head. I have no friends. His inner self shook its head. You may fool others, but you can't fool yourself. I see deep into you. You love them. So much so that you considered giving up this impossible dream. Sasuke's fist clenched. It's not impossible, and I can do it too. You'll see. As he came closer to the gate, he looked up. Lo and behold, there stood Sakura, as if fate itself were attempting to test his resolve. I knew you would try to leave, she said as she came closer. He looked at her straightly and spoke without beating around any bushes. Don't try to stop me. She looked down. Your conviction. I don't think I could ever stop you. Sasuke stood there silently looking at her. If she didn't come to stop me, then why is she out here? Is she just here wishing me goodbye? Realizing she wouldn't be a threat to his goals, he stepped closer. Standing by her side, facing the direction with which her back was turned, he spoke. Goodbye, Sakura. Give the team my love and apologies. I have to do this. I hope you understand. As he began to walk away, he heard her voice call out in the night. I do understand. I understand that you need to avenge your family, but you don't have to do it alone. He stopped and slowly turned around. He saw her shyly standing there, carrying a bag of her own. Sasuke looked down at it and then back up to her for a moment. What are you trying to do? She opened her eyes, having closed them before as if she were too afraid to see his reaction. Perhaps afraid he would be mad. Perhaps afraid he would tell her no. And this is exactly what happened. No, he said flatly as he turned to leave. She gasped in shock and saw him walking away. Why not? He kept walking toward the gate, speaking back at her as the distance grew. Because I don't want you to throw your life away from my dream. If you leave, the village will hunt you. It will label you a missing nin, and at the very worst, you could end up on the Anbu's bingo book. And you? she asked. He stopped only for a moment to look at her out of the corner of his eye. I'm willing to take that risk. Her fists clenched as he said this. She asked him a simple question. Why is it okay for you to throw your life away for your dreams and not me? He looked back at her fully. Your dreams? Your dreams are not dreams. They're the obsessions of a girl exposed to puppy love. You're not in a right enough mind for this. Trust me. In about a month, you'll forget about me and carry on with your life, finding a new boy to crush on. She almost seemed offended by what he said. Don't tell me how I feel, and don't invalidate my emotions. You say I don't care. When I thought you died in the land of waves, my life felt like it was crashing down. I knew the rules. A shinobi never sheds tears in front of the enemy. I cried for you. I wept bitterly, in the open, in front of Zabuza, Haku, Gato. I cried. I wanted to die too. I wanted to die instead. And when Itachi put you in the hospital, I spent every waking moment waiting for you, praying for you. Don't tell me what my dreams are, Sasuke. He stood there awestruck. She continued, Your dreams. I know them. Kill Itachi and then rebuild your clan. That's where our dreams line up. My dreams are to see you happy and to be your bride. To be a member of your clan. To help raise up your clan with you. Our dreams are not mutually exclusive. They overlap and I'll be damned if I'm going to let you chase yours and tell me I can't chase mine. She threw her bag over her shoulder and stepped forward. If you're leaving, I'm going too. I've made up my mind, and if you leave without me, I'll just sneak out later and meet up with you. You can't stop me from doing this just as I can't stop you from leaving. I'm coming with you, and that's final. Sasuke was feeling a rush of emotions. Anger and disgust were some of them, like he had just somehow picked up a stalker. But at the same time, a part of him was happy. He was sad that she was throwing away any meaningful future she could have in the leaf, but he was also glad that he would not have to leave behind all of his friends. Maybe Naruto had to stay behind, but Sakura was coming too. At this moment, he began to wish that Naruto had also come along with them, but then again, he was glad he could stay. Naruto's dreams were just too different from Sasuke's. Naruto wanted to become Hokage, and to do that, they would have to travel in opposite directions. Naruto needed to get closer to the leaf to achieve his dream of being Hokage, and Sasuke himself would need to leave it behind. Sakura, though. Her dreams kept her close, and he admitted that she had a point. He would eventually need a wife to revive his clan, and there was no single person more dedicated to the task than her. He nodded. Fine then. Try and keep up. And don't slow me down or I'll leave you behind. He then turned and left the village. They met up with the Sound 4, all of which were pleased that Sasuke had taken their master up on his offer of hospitality. They did doubt Sakura though, stating that she was not part of the deal. Their master had never offered to take her in. Sasuke stated that she was now a part of the deal. 
He wanted her to come with her, and if he couldn't bring her, then he wouldn't come. Sasuke knew that Orochimaru needed him as much as Sasuke needed Orochimaru. This was not a kind gesture out of the goodness of his heart. Orochimaru wanted him to take over his body, but Sasuke would not allow this to happen. Sasuke would learn everything he could in the next three years before killing Orochimaru and taking off. Kimimaro would suddenly appear, having been watching from a distance. It's okay. Our master will not mind a second guest. So long as it makes Sasuke happy, he can bring with him whoever he wants. The other members of the Sound 4, technically Sound 5 now, would defer to their leader and begin to leave, being on their way. The following morning, the sun would rise and Sasuke would be gone. Sakura too. However, due to the fact that Sakura had not raised the alarm, nobody knew that they were out of the village. Sasuke's betrayal was never expected. That doesn't mean that they don't go after them though. They eventually do, but by that time, it's too late. Sasuke and Sakura are already gone a far ways away, trekking through the Valley of the End and letting the waters mask their scent. It also didn't help that it began to rain, further covering the trail. Along the way, however, Sasuke would warn Sakura to remain vigilant before taking the special medicine that would help him awaken the second stage of his curse mark. They would fit him into a large cask and carry him on their back for a good many hours. The rest of the day, in fact. But eventually, Sasuke emerged and he seemed even stronger. Pure and utter elation was written across his face. She could sense that he was stronger. In his own head, Sasuke laughed. He knew it. He absolutely knew it. Working with Orochimaru was a good idea. His power had skyrocketed and all he had done was take a pill. Now he merely needed to see what else Orochimaru had in store. As they crossed the land of fire, they eventually made their way toward the border where Orochimaru's hideout was. They would present Sasuke to Orochimaru. Sakura looked up at the man. He was covered in bandages. This was not the same man that she remembered seeing. Orochimaru seemed to be recovering. Had the third Hokage truly hurt him this much? Or was this from the beatdown he received from Lady Tsunade and Jiraiya? Sasuke, however, knew the truth. Orochimaru had already taken a new vessel. That was good for him, though, because it meant that Orochimaru would not be able to take a new vessel for another three years. That would be time Orochimaru would be spending helping Sasuke grow stronger. What Sasuke saw as training, Orochimaru saw as fattening up a cow for slaughter. Sasuke knew that, and he had resolved to never allow it to happen to him. Orochimaru would welcome them in with flowery talk, soothing their ears with words of comfort and peacefulness like a snake and its charmer. But neither Sakura nor Sasuke trusted this, seeing right through it. It had only been a short while since the Konoha crush and the Chunin exams. Both Sakura and Sasuke had experienced him before, and their last experience was terrifying. Pure and utter bloodlust. It was enough to startle them, freeze them in place with fear. He was like a totally different person now, and that made him dangerous. However, both knew that Orochimaru would not make a move against them. He needed Sasuke alive and interested. So for now, they were just going through the grooming period, hoping to transform him into the perfect vessel with which to store Orochimaru's soul. Leading them deeper, he gave them a tour of the place before stopping in the lab. This is where I make the magic happen. This is where your strength will come from. A conjunction of hard work and advanced shinobi science. Hand in hand, you will grow past your limits 100-fold. Sasuke would stand there begin the next procedure. Orochimaru would do a double take. It's too soon. You've only just awakened your curse mark. Sasuke glared up at Orochimaru. I came here to grow stronger faster. That's what I plan to do, and that is what you will do for me. Or did you waste my time? Orochimaru would stumble over his words. N no, but you do need time to recover or your body will suffer the opposite effects. You'll grow weaker. Sasuke crossed his arms. Orochimaru relented. There may be one simple procedure we can take. I've developed a new type of steroid. It should help you gain muscle mass and increase your chakra reserves. He looked to Kimimaro. Prepare H238. Two milliliter injection. He would look back at Sasuke and gestured for him to enter the room. That should be enough to get you started. Sasuke nods and walks into the room, choosing a chair to sit in. Sakura stood against the far wall and watched. The rest of the crowd dispersed and Kimimaro went to the refrigerator and pulled a vial out before grabbing a fresh syringe. After pressing the needle in, he would pull the plunger and draw the liquid into it. He would then walk over to Sasuke. Sasuke had already rolled up his sleeve. So Orochimaru plans to make me his next vessel, huh? Kimimaro, focused on the task at hand, would begin to sterilize the area with an alcoholic swab. It's a great honor indeed. Only the strongest and most compatible get a chance to become one with Lord Orochimaru. Sasuke would look to him. Then why didn't he choose you? Kimimaro would remain silent for a moment as he pressed the needle into Sasuke's arm. I wasn't compatible. Sasuke knew that there had to be more to this. Kimimaro possessed the curse mark. This meant that he was one of the few who were compatible with Orochimaru's DNA. 
How is it that you have a curse mark if you're not compatible? Kimimaru would slowly pull the syringe out and dispose of it before continuing. By incompatible, I mean I do not meet the proper criteria to make me a suitable host. Kimimaru would begin putting the vial away, returning it to its place in the refrigerator. I am terminally ill. Sakura covered her mouth. Oh no, I'm sorry. Kimimaru would brush it off. Not that big of a deal. My only purpose is to serve Lord Orochimaru. If my usefulness is reaching its end, then I would prefer to die than live a meaningless life. I must admit, I am slightly bitter towards you, Sasuke Uchiha. Envious, even. I wanted to be where you are now. Sasuke gazed through his eyebrows. He did not say anything whatsoever, but this person truly disgusted him. To live your life like this, a slave to another man. Willingly a slave. Envious of the indentured when his time to be free is almost come. So fanatically following a man that you were willing to die just so that person could continue to use others like you as a tool to selfishly chase his own desires of eternal youth. Sasuke held his tongue though. Kimimaro continued, The prognosis is bleak. After my last physical, which was two days ago, I was told I would have roughly one week to live. So anywhere from now to next week is my expiration date. I've already been phased out as leader of the Sound 5. Sakon and Ukon have taken my place. I'm allowed to help, but mostly I've been swept into the corner to perish. Sakura looked away, unable to believe that someone could ever just abandon someone who had so wholeheartedly given everything to their master. It was beyond her comprehension. Nonetheless, it was the state of things, and she didn't wish to rock the boat. Sakura knew that she was only here because Sasuke was protecting her, but she knew that if Orochimaru ever truly got tired of her and decided to call Sasuke's bluff, then she would be dead in an instant. And so, she remained quiet. Kimimaro turned back. The procedure is complete. You're free to leave. Sasuke stood and made his way to the door, motioning for Sakura to fall in line. Outside, they found Kabuto, still recovering from his fight with Naruto, bidding them to follow him. Sasuke looked to Kabuto and spoke. Why are you here? What's Orochimaru offering you? Kabuto looked back. Oh, nothing. He isn't offering me anything. Like everyone else here, I serve him of my own free will. Sasuke was confused. He just had to inquire. Why is it that everyone likes Orochimaru? The guy will kill you in a heartbeat if he saw any gain whatsoever from it. Kabuto would nod. Lord Orochimaru is a hard man. He shows little affection towards his followers, and we know that he likely has none. But on the contrary, we have a lot of care for him. Nearly fanatical, if I were to say. It's not too far removed from a cult, and this little village we've formed would be our commune. Sasuke would continue. Okay, but that still doesn't answer my question. What made you all decide to follow him in the first place? Kabuto would continue walking without looking over his shoulder. Some come here for power. That would be those like you, and they tend to find it. But others come here because they have nowhere else to go. Some of us are unwanted, outcasts, the world having trodden us underfoot. Orochimaru, though, he hasn't cast us aside. You should tell that to Kimimaro, Sakura accidentally blurted out. She covered her mouth as if she had realized she said something wrong out of turn, but Kabuto was not mad. He addressed her concerns. While it is true, Orochimaru is merely following the facts and reshaping his strategy because of it, Kimimaru will die. He's sick. He may be strong, but he's no longer something that we can rely upon, and thus must be removed from positions where we truly rely upon him. Any sensible boss would do the same. Sasuke continued. And what about you? Why do you choose to follow him? Because he rescued me, Kabuto said. I was a young shinobi from an orphanage. I was on my mission when my superiors turned against me and planned to have me killed. They planned to have me murdered by my own orphanage's administrator, a woman I saw as a mother. Cruel, huh? Well, she didn't kill me, but a kill squad was dispatched to destroy me. But Orochimaru saved me, so I suppose there is some loyalty in there. Loyalty because of a good deed done to me. Gratitude. But if I'm going to be 100% honest with you, I sort of lied when I said I was gaining nothing. I'm actually gaining plenty of knowledge for my own scientific endeavors. So long as I bring something to the table, I'm allowed access to all of Lord Orochimaru's research materials. I suppose we share a kindred spirit. There are a plethora of reasons why people join my master. But out of all of them, the number one most common reason is to simply find a place where we belong. This is a misfit village run by misfits for misfits. If you belong nowhere else, you belong here. It's not a perfect relationship, but it's better than what we had. Kabuto would stop by a room and showed them in. There were two beds laying against opposite walls. This is where the two of you will sleep. I hope you don't mind sharing. If you have any issues, let me know and I'll see if we can switch sleeping arrangements. Sasuke stepped past him and threw all of his bags onto one of the beds. This is fine. Kabuto turned and left without another word. Sakura stepped in and sat down on her own bed. This place gives me the heebie-jeebies. 
Are you sure this is a good idea, Sasuke? If you don't like it, then leave, he said bluntly. I, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant, like, do you think it'll really help you in the long run? He proceeded to lift his bed off the floor with one hand. A feat more impressive to Sakura when she noticed that the bed had screws on the feet to ensure that it stayed in place. Sasuke spoke. The results speak for themselves. If you're worried that he'll take my body over, don't. He can only take a new body every three years or so, and he's just taken a new body, meaning that we have at least three years to train before he needs a new vessel. And by that time, I expect to be strong enough to survive without him. Sakura looked around. What about me, though? He doesn't need me for a vessel. How do I survive here? Sasuke kicked back on his bed and just lay there. Try to make him need you. You know, become useful. You're a smart girl, Sakura. You aced every test at the academy, and your scores would have been the highest in the first part of the tuning exam had the test actually been about knowledge. Put those brains to good use, and maybe he'll let you stay. And that is exactly what she did. In the time to come, both Sasuke and Sakura grew. Sasuke grew stronger, and Sakura grew more intelligent. With her support, Sasuke and Sakura grew closer as a result. Always being there to tend to him when he pushed himself too far, she proved to be as dependable as she was determined. A time came, though, when they would both be sent to another facility by Orochimaru to help with some experiments. They were to deliver some research material to another lab, and so both Sasuke and Sakura would go together, Sakura being the only one who could decipher the meaning of each sheet of paper. She was planned to help out with the experiments being performed on a being with a unique ability. Apparently, he can do more than affect water with ninjutsu, he can also become it. Sasuke was interested to hear this. I think I'd like to see what he's capable of firsthand. Sakura looked into the folders and spoke. You don't mean you're going to cut him loose, do you? Sasuke smiled. I'm going to need as many allies as possible. Time's coming when I'll need allies. I won't be with Orochimaru much longer. His lessons are slowing down and his need for a new vessel is right around the corner. She nods. Well, if you can get this Suigetsu on your side, it shouldn't be too hard to find Itachi. It seems Suigetsu can detect new information through water. That should make for a good scout. On top of that, he's considered about as bad as Zabuza Momochi. Sasuke growls. That leaves a bad taste in my mouth. If he's anything like Zabuza though, he'll make a great ally. And so they make it to this new facility. It's there that they meet Karin, the person in charge of the facility. As Sakura keeps her busy with new experiments and hypotheses, Sasuke sabotages the containment system and lets him out. The first thing Suigetsu does is attempt to run. When this is discovered by Karin, she immediately forges ahead to find him, Sasuke and Sakura in tow. They would find him in a nearby river, trying to use it to escape. He's well hidden, but manages to show himself as an ambush. He nearly drowns Sakura, but she manages to survive when Sasuke defeats him, reminding him that electric-type attacks are always super effective against water types. They return Suigetsu to his cell, Sasuke quite satisfied with the results. Sakura, however, is glad to be leaving, as she dislikes Karin very much for some reason. They'd make their way back to Orochimaru's lab, where they're welcomed back. They would report the slight snag, but mention that the situation was properly taken care of. Orochimaru would commend them on a job well done. It's during this time that Gara, the Kazakage, is captured, and Naruto and Kakashi are sent to save him. They ultimately fail, and Gara is lost alongside Chio. However, they do receive information about a secret meeting with an informant in Orochimaru's ranks. Sasuke and Sakura are resting when time comes that Sai appears to kill them. Sai, having not been exposed to the relationship between Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke, has no qualms about doing so. As she sleeps, he sneaks up on her and quickly grips her by the throat. Her eyes shoot open and she attempts to scream, but the pressure of Sai's thumbs on her vocal cords causes her throat to grow tighter, and her voice to lower into a choking gasp. She tried to fight him off, but he's trained in ways to subdue an opponent lying on their back. The vessels in her eyes begin to burst as she feels herself losing consciousness. Suddenly, Sai feels a presence and turns around to see two red Sharingan staring at him through the darkness. Without a chance to even react, a Chidori-covered hand bursts from his chest, Sasuke having run him through. Sai falls to the ground and slumps up against the wall. Sasuke slings his hand through the air a bit to discharge the blood and sinew still attached. He then looks to Sakura, who is gasping, trying to catch her breath. She looks to Sasuke, who asks if she's alright. She is. It's then that Kabuto appears and states that they need to go. Sasuke and Sakura go topside. However, they find Naruto and Yamato waiting for them. Sakura's eyes go wide as she mutters under her breath, Naruto. Naruto stands there, a look of pain upon his face. Slowly, a smile begins to form as relief to that pain is administered in the form of witnessing his companions. I found you, he says. We need to return to the leaf. It's not too late. Tell them, Yamato-sensei. Yamato nods. It's not too late. You haven't made any moves against Konoha. If you're punished at all, it will be very lenient. Sakura looks to Sasuke. Sasuke at this time is not yet as cold and angry. In the OG timeline, Sasuke wanted to kill Naruto to prove that he didn't need them anymore and that he had truly let go of his past. But as he stands here now, he has Sakura by his side. 
He has not tried to forget his past. He continues running from it. Sasuke looks down on Naruto and shakes his head to the side. No, not yet. Naruto, I haven't killed Itachi yet. I can't return to Konoha or everything I've done to this point will have been for nothing. I need to see this through. Naruto opens his arms invitingly. Then let's do it together. We don't need Orochimaru. You've gotten plenty strong on your own. Let's go the last mile together and then we can return to Konoha. And in that quick moment, Sasuke kills both Orochimaru and Kapato with a double Chidori. Their bodies hit the ground, dead before they even knew it. Sasuke would stand there, back against Naruto and the others. He would absorb the remains of Orochimaru to gain his abilities. He would then stand. I will return to Konoha with you, but only after I've killed Itachi. Naruto would nod and Sakura would smile. First things first, we need to locate Itachi. Yamato would nod. The leaf is currently hunting the Akatsuki. It shouldn't be too long until word comes that he has been spotted. If you allow me to talk with Lady Tsunade, we can get the details worked up and you can return to the village for a little while without consequence. Sasuke nods. And so the renewed Team 7 returns to Konoha together. Upon reaching the village, they wait outside as Yamato enters to talk to Tsunade. Naruto is just sitting there with the biggest grin on his face. I bet you won't even see any prison time. You helped kill Orochimaru. If anything, Tsunade can pin you as undercover. You'll automatically reach Chunin, perhaps even go Jonin. Sasuke scoffed and smiled. You're as dim-witted as ever, but it is good to be home. As they sat there though, they would be ushered in by Might Guy, who would say Tsunade wished to see them. He would enter the room with only Sakura by his side. Is it true that Orochimaru's dead? Sasuke would nod. Tsunade would lean back. I suppose that is for the best. And the fact that he was killed by your hands will do well for you. I may be able to circumvent a trial entirely by stating that you and Sakura were deep cover agents. After all, no Konoha shinobi were hurt trying to rescue you, and the effects of your actions have done a great service to Konoha. And as for Sakura, any information you have on Orochimaru will be enough to help us. She nodded. I have a lot of information. Many experiments he did, I know where his facilities are and those locked within. Tsunade smiles as she clasps her fingers and leans forward on the desk. It's great to have you both back. Sasuke would change subject though. I request to be on the team that will track Itachi down. I cannot rest until I've personally killed him. If I don't, then my leaving, my training, it would have been for nothing. Tsunade sits back in her chair. I would hardly say it would have been for nothing. You did grow stronger out of this, and you also managed to bring down public enemy number one and his entire organization. Sasuke's eyes told her that this was not enough to justify it and that he needed this. Tsunade relented. I'll put you on the team. As soon as any reports come in from our scouts, you're free to engage Itachi with as much or as little help as required. Sasuke thanked her and then spoke, telling her that there was only one person worthy of being there when he fought Itachi. He looked to Sakura with a smile. She promptly returned it. And so, for a time, he waited. Other members of the Akatsuki were found and defeated, such as Hidan and Kakazu. But for a while, nothing. That was until a shinobi returned with a message. He didn't witness Itachi so much as Itachi attacked him and told him to deliver a message. A message only for Sasuke. Come to the Uchiha hideout. Be here by sundown. Tonight, we end this. Sasuke sits on the bed of his apartment and slides on his shoes, loading more kunai into his shuriken pouch. He then just sits there and looks out over the village. He takes a deep breath as he listens to the peaceful silence. The letter had said it flatly. It ended tonight. Sasuke would either return to Konoha triumphantly, or he would die. This was the end of the line for the dream that had kept him alive for the past nine years. He stood up and looked down on the village. He saw Sakura in full gear. Both were wearing the standard black vesture under a flak jacket. This was Chunin wear, and they had earned it upon being granted the rank of Chunin. Still, Sasuke felt like he didn't deserve it. After all, he had lost faith in Konoha when he left. Not again. He vowed to himself that he would never lose faith in Konoha again. She walked into his room to see him looking out the window. Sasuke, are you ready? He looked back at her. I'll never be ready, but I'm willing. He knew that he did not possess the Mangekyo Sharingan. That was the one thing Itachi stated that he would need to beat him. Yet Sasuke did not possess it. Sasuke would step out into the streets. He walked with Sakura toward the gate. He looked into the sky and could only remember that night in the compound. He was determined to see this through. For years, he had anticipated this moment. He was going to kill Itachi. But now that the time had come, he wasn't angry, nor was he confident. He was scared. He looked over towards Sakura and remembered how she had stood by him. How Naruto had stood by him and how Kakashi was always standing by him. He didn't want to lose, but at the same time, his conscience would not allow him to stop. Gazing upon the radiance of Sakura, he only now realized how beautiful she was. Only here, at what could be possibly the end, did he truly understand what he had. He made another vow to himself. 
If he survived this, then the first thing he would do when he got back to the village would be propose to Sakura. As soon as he was back, he would purchase a ring with his savings and present it to her over a bowl of ramen. He was too young to get married at the moment, as was she, both being only 16 years old, but Sasuke could not wait to make his promise. They may have been too young to get married, but they weren't too young to promise themselves. And so, if tonight, or tomorrow, or whenever he returned to the village, if he returned, he would express his love to Sakura, acknowledge her for who she was, not only to the world, but to him, and cement their relationship. He was making these vows left and right. He vowed to make Kakashi proud, to let Tsunade know that she did the right thing by pardoning him, to surpass Naruto, to marry Sakura and start a clan with her. These things he vowed to do. He needed to make these vows as he needed something to push him forward. He needed a responsibility to keep so that he could never lose heart or footing in battle. Stepping to the gate, he saw Naruto there along with many other shinobi, as well as Kakashi, all wearing great ponchos to cover their weapons. One was presented to Sasuke and he put it on. He looked at the gate and watched it open. The opening of the gate was symbolic to him. A new horizon was forming, not only on the land, but on his future, for better or worse. He raced out with them. They jumped from tree to tree. On his back, he had his blade strapped. He was going over every scenario in his head, and he thought about every attack, every ability he and Itachi shared. Sasuke was fairly confident in his strength, but he wanted to have extra strategies saved up for when he fought Itachi. He wanted to have something to fall back on just in case Itachi's strength was more than anticipated. For the most part, Sasuke was silent, distant as they traveled. His mind was obviously elsewhere on an imaginary 4D plan. He may have physically been there, but his mind was in the future, bouncing off every possibility, running numbers and calculating his chance of success in everything, from a scripted set of attacks and combos, to Itachi's responses, and even his own chance of survival. All knew he wasn't here at the moment, and none bothered to call him out. It was a long, silent travel from point A to point B. They would eventually stop in front of the hideout. He looked to Sakura. You can watch, but you cannot interfere. Sakura knew what he was saying. He wasn't trying to impress her, and he wasn't trying to get her to help him. His allowance of her presence in this faded battle between brothers was based solely in comfort. He wanted her safe and out of the way, but he wanted her close by, just in case. If he had to perish, he wanted her there with him. That's why she was there. He stepped in. Please try to stay out of Itachi's line of sight. Don't draw attention to yourself. Let me handle this. She nodded. He stepped in and was greeted by Itachi, who asked why he didn't attempt to sneak up behind him and kill him. Sasuke would note that Itachi would have seen through such an attack anyway. This battle was nine years coming. He didn't want to spoil it with a stealth assassination. Itachi would ask if he finally possessed the Mangekyo, and Sasuke would shake his head. I didn't achieve it, but I doubt I'll really need it to take care of you. And from that point, their battle began. Their minds thinking at speeds akin to the Sharingan's perception time, they circled each other, trading genjutsu and diffusing it the same. It was only when Sasuke managed to overcome Tsukiyomi that Itachi began to take this battle seriously. After all, while few could resist, there had been none so far who could nullify it. It was then that things got physical. As they clashed, blood, sweat, and deep heavy breaths could be seen and heard, being traded with the clashing of fists. As their battle continued to reach its climax, Sasuke began to witness the true terror of the Susano. Sasuke had seen the battle going against him, and so he planned to hedge all of his bets on the Kirin. However, to his horror, the attack did no damage due to the absolute defense of Susano. Sasuke was out of options. He heard in his mind the call of Orochimaru. Sasuke did not know if he was willing to let Orochimaru take him over just to defeat Itachi. He had so much he wanted to return to. He did not know if he could survive without it, though. Sasuke continued looking for a way, and when it seemed like there might not be any other choice, he sorrowfully looked to Sakura, who returned the gaze with a look of terror. Sasuke lipped the words to her, run. He then let Orochimaru have control. This was a last-ditch effort to survive. He couldn't survive without Orochimaru's influence. He could only hope that he had enough chakra left over to resist Orochimaru's attempts to suppress his own consciousness. It was then that Orochimaru was forcefully ripped from Sasuke and removed by the Susanoo's blade of Tatsuka. Sasuke was shocked, startled. He was out of chakra and out of options. Pressed up against the wall, he felt as he might cry. He wasn't ready to die. There were still things he wanted to do, things more important than revenge, things more important than Itachi and this hollow victory that he would have if he had survived. Why did he spend all of his life chasing this? This wasn't worth it. He should have remained in the village. I'm not ready. I don't want to die. Itachi crept closer as his hands raised, ready to pluck Sasuke's eye from its socket. Itachi's entire demeanor changed, his scowl turning to a smile as he poked Sasuke's head like he always used to. I'll teach you later, Sasuke. He then fell to his knees, face planted into the stone slab, and fell to the ground. Sasuke was left in shock as he stood there. Did he win? 
He checked Itachi's pulse and found it was gone. He fell on his butt and smiled. He began to laugh. Not because he killed them, but because he survived. He may have won by default, but a victory was a victory. And now he could do whatever he wanted. Everything he had planned. As he sat there, he saw Sakura peek out. She saw him laughing. She ran over. Sasuke, are you okay? He was weak, but still alive. She held him up in her arms as he laughed. She began to smile, but suddenly his laughs turned to terrifying crying. I was so scared, he said to her. I thought he was going to kill me. I thought I would die without, without. She looked at him. Without? His eyes opened. He sat forward and pressed his lips against hers. At first, she was shocked. Her first reaction was to push him away, but as her mind processed it, her instincts laxed and she leaned into it, accepting him completely. That night, they returned to Konoha, the body of Itachi in tow. Sasuke and Sakura shared a delicious meal at Ichiraku, and just as he had vowed, he offered her a ring. It wasn't a fancy one. Sasuke didn't have much in his savings to spare, but what he did have was enough to buy a single ring. He presented it to her as he came down to his knees. I know it's early. We're only 16, but the moment we can marry, I want to. You've always stood by my side, Sakura. You've always had my back. I could always rely upon you. Now, I want to stand by you. Always have your back, and always be as reliable and dependable as you were to me. Please, if you'll have me, will you marry me? She covered her face as tears dripped from her eyes. She couldn't formulate enough words to answer him. All she could do was nod her head like a crazy person. He took her hand and slid the ring upon her finger. Teuchi in the background smiled. He had seen these kids come into the shop, their parents. He remembered when Makoto Uchiha came in for lunch, her stomach enlarged from pregnancy. Now he was witnessing her child vowing to marry a girl. Things always came full circle. From the unique perspective of a ramen vendor, Teuchi could see this giant bowl of noodles called Konoha acting and reacting to the intertwined lives of those who lived within. Each action, no matter how small, affecting the whole. It pleased him to watch. He offered a free bowl on the house. After this though, they didn't have much time to celebrate, as just a few weeks later, Pain came to the village searching for Naruto. Sasuke was here to fight, but found his powers lacking when compared to what he had when he possessed the powers of Orochimaru. Upon witnessing the deaths of many of his friends, including his mentor Kakashi, Sasuke immediately awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan and began to fight against the Six Paths of Pain. It was then that Naruto returned in Sage Mode, and together the two proceeded to fight against Pain and turn the tide of the battle. In the end, the enemy was defeated and the village was revived. But, during the Five Kage Summit, Tobi, under the guise of Madara, declared the Fourth Shinobi World War. This led to the ultimate battle between the allied Shinobi forces and the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, Obito Uchiha. Obito managed to survive long enough for the moon to rise. However, Obito did not know the full extent of the plan, and he realized he did not possess the power to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. He had not known that he would need both of Madara's Rinnegan to activate the Rinne Sharingan. This leaves him open for attack, to which Sasuke and Naruto manage to strip him of the Ten Tails. With his single Rinnegan, he has a change of heart and uses the Rinne Tensei, which brings back the dead that he killed in the war. This includes Neji Hyuga. Obito would then pass away, his body and Rinnegan seized by Konoha. From there, things begin to get back to normal. Sakura and Sasuke have the time to get married, and the events of the last movie take place. However, due to Naruto not possessing Six Path Sage Mode, some stuff changes, meaning he actually has a lot more trouble fighting Toneri. However, with Sasuke there, who was likely would have already upgraded to Eternal Mangekyo by this point, they managed to beat him. The issue that comes when they have to fight Momoshiki and Kinshiki is if they actually have the strength to beat them, since neither Naruto nor Sasuke have Six Paths power at this point. Considering though that Momoshiki's powered up form was defeated by Boruto, I assume that it isn't impossible for them to win. And as for Ishiki, well, Naruto still has Kurama, and I'm certain that Baryon Mode doesn't even use Six Paths Chakra anyway, so Naruto probably solos. Honestly though, if Naruto had stacked it with Six Paths power, he likely would have been stronger and probably would have lasted longer and his body would be converting nature energy into heavy particles as opposed to Kurama's life force. So Kurama could have possibly survived if Naruto just used Sage Mode on top of it. Or so I think. But what about you? What are your opinions? What did you think of this story? Did you like it? If so, let me know in the comments below. I really enjoyed making this one for you, and I hope you had fun watching it. Let me know what you think should have happened, and if you have more ideas like this one, let us know. We're always hungry for more what-if material, so be sure to tell us. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.